now YouTube is with us as well. Hello and welcome back to Mike's Basement. Today we're going to take a trip from Olbau Airport. Airport? 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 Also called Echo, Kilo, Yankee, Tanko, if you want to follow on. I will also, just now that I remember it, start V pilot. No, not X pilot. And check to see if there's an update for it. The post is not. And it says it's successfully connected. That's good. Uh, let me get my plan up. Because I wanted to see. Uh, let's see. Flight level 340. I, I suppose it's uh, flight level. Three four zero. Yeah. So we're going to uh, take a trip to uh, the Faroe Islands. A cruising altitude is going to be thirty four thousand feet. Flight time. Let me see if it says it here. Uh, So 12, 10, and 30, 13, 55, so that's about, let's just say two hours, two, two and a half hours, two hours, 30 minutes, and we're probably about an hour away from takeoff. We have about 100 passengers. I'm setting, um, I'm setting up, um, passengers crew, crew experience packs. Next, it's Wi-Fi equipped. Yes, unfortunately, I cannot show you this because uh, for some reason, my w whenever I go, I use the Vulcan driver and I go to screencast instead of gamecast, I don't know. It just seems to uh, to uh, to go very very uh, slow. So let's see. Aircraft has IFR. Yeah, let's just take that. Play boarding. No, conserve. I'm going to wait a little bit by pressing with pressing start let me get the x pilot up it's connected let me go to my flight plan so we're going to go from equit to ekvg if i can find my alternative let me just show you what i'm talking about let's go into the flight deck for a moment and let me show you the av tab i should be able to show you that and also fly life also seems to be working perfectly you can tell me in the chat if something is gone missing yeah you can see the av tab let me just bring it a little bit down so you can see it better let's go into charts let's go into uh no it was explain 11 output fms plans and let's find ek eq to not that there it is so look at that i have now a uh, a real sas front here so that's one of the cool things about some of the tools that i use let me see if i can show you now uh, the frames might drop insanely if i go into uh into uh screencast mode but let's let's see what happens no seems to be okay all right so uh let me uh show you so um just update that again there are some tools that are that you can use when you want to play something like uh i mean use simulators like this i use mainly two kind of tools in brief now one of the cool things about Simbrief is that it's online so you don't need to install anything if you have a navigraph account you get continuous updates to um uh what's it called uh <laughs> um your the arix uh updates so that is basically uh the announced and and approved routes and and waypoints and all that that pilots can use in order to uh to uh to uh to show um where where the, where the waypoints are that's what I'm trying to say. Sorry about that. So, um, let me just show you how it looks. Um, it's very simple. You put in a, uh, 
name, whatever you want to call it, flight number, I think mine is 728 right now, departure, arrival, and all that. But as you can see, it's okay, but it's not very advanced. I mean, it's uh, for the fact that this is completely free, except for you need an, an Navigraph or Navigraph uh, account in order to get these uh, Eric cycles updated. <clears throat> Besides that, it's completely free to use. And it's new. It's, it's, it's relatively up. I just have to take the phone. I'll be right back. Sorry. The ever wonderful life of a household parent. I have to go down and help my wife get some stuff up. Uh, but yeah, you can use Simperif. It's free to use. You just need to make an account. You have a host of different um, OF uh, flight plan um layouts that you can use you can change units you can use whatever you want to be reserve fuel and all that you, you can you can set some different uh parameters here but not that not that many i also use another tool but i can't get it to work and it's called uh vas um airplane toolbox i think it's called for some reason it won't start up i need to uh to error check that for a moment uh, but the other tool that I use, and I use that a bit more, is this. It's called Professional Flight Planner X or PFPX. <laughs> now, this is very much a pay, pay, payware tool. It's, it's actually, in my opinion, from what you get, the updates and all that, <laughs> it's pretty expensive, I will say. And, and there is a sort of a, a, a code tool with it that it's called TopCat. It's a, it's a, it's, it's actually a pretty, really good. Let me just show you. It's an excellent tool for planning um, takeoff and landing. That's that that really what it, it's it's doing. But unfortunately, the people that is making this program here have not updated the profiles, and and they are hard coded. So you cannot just put in a new profile into to TopCat and then get what you want. Unfortunately, that would have been really cool. Um, so for me, it is unfortunately practically useless. I cannot use it for anything because uh, the calculations that I need to do uh, is engine specific. And there are no engines that match the new engines, not even the old engines. Maybe they are there. I cannot remember. The the uh, the uh, Airbus A321 is simply uh, too new an aircraft. But other than that, it's a really nice tool. I'm not going to make a new plan, but let me just show you that you can... You have a host of options. So let me just put something in 728. Let's put in uh, EKCH to uh let me let's take the one that i used before so as you can see you can choose between domestic it's a long that's long range flight it's not a scheduled you can take off time and you have to put in some some aircraft so let me show you that for just a short let me just add this we choose this as a dmo the 251 new yes max blah 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 save all right, so let me show you. So here's your aircraft. Oh. <laughs> here's your aircraft database. So one of the cool things about this is that when you go into one of these aircrafts that I have here, you have general, you have tail number. You can set a lot of options, a lot, a lot, a lot of options. Taxi fuel main, APU burn hour. There's a host of options. And you can see here we have the Topcat takeoff and landing performance. Let me just show you. Edit. A little while. So as you can see, we have the old CF uh, M56 beef. That's the closest. A2214. They're too weak. We cannot use them. These are the engines that uh, the, the engines, uh, the airplanes that we have right now. And none of them, as far as I can see, really match the uh, airbus engine so unfortunately i cannot use the takeoff and landing performance calculator too bad we have threshold time there's a 
I mean, there's so many options that you can check here that I can't even go into them right now. It's it would be a long stream in, its, in itself to to show you all the different options that you can play around with and and use in um, in uh, in PFPX. One of the things is that if you want to do long range flights, you need to set up an uh, EDTO. I can't remember what it was called before or it's called now. It, it's basically the rating for the engine's uh, sustained engine flight. So it's a rating that you need to have on your airplane in order to do, for example, transatlantic flights, which I did yesterday. That's one of the things you can put into uh, PFPX on your airplane. You can also go into this APM. That's an aircraft performance monitoring system. Here you can calculate a fuel and a drag bias and it's really something that you do when you're inside the airplane and you're flying so you go in you add some numbers so you need to have the gross weight altitude flight level the cruise cruise or cost index true air temperature the ISO deviation recorded true airspeed recorded ground speed and recorded fuel consumption per hour and then you get different numbers here you add it and then when you have enough data you can get a fuel bias and a drag bias that will even more tell you how uh, well performing your aircraft is. It's it's a it's an incredible tool. It's a bit slower. I don't think they really optimized it that well. I'm not sure, but but other than that, it's a really 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 nice tool to to have in your toolbox. So when you go in and you plan a flight, because that's what you do, right? You plan your flights. You tell it your flight number, your call sign, where you're going, which runway you're going to use. We can check that, change that around. Taxi in, taxi out time. You can put in some dispatch remarks, what type it is, the aircraft, which configuration. I mean, l there's a lot of things. All the yellow and red ones are ones that you do need to put in. Even something like cost, you can put in fuel cost inside it. And and then use that to uh, to to figure out how much how how much your flight actually cost. I mean, I, I love it. You put in a payload, number of children, baggage, cargo, all that. Obviously, you need that. You put in a route, and then you need to have an alternative. One of the cool things about this is that when you have all of this, uh, let me just go back to my. Uh, did it crash now? Yeah, it crashed. Like I said, it's not really that well optimized. But when you have all of that inside, let me go back to the game. There we go. When you have all of that inside um, your plan um, into PFPX, uh, then you can output the um, your plan. As a plan file um just like i showed you here you can print it out so you can show it in game that's me um you can also get the plan inside uh your airplane um just by typing the name it's a company route and that makes it a heck of a lot easier to plan your flights all right i will uh let you see the external of this beautiful beautiful airbus there we go and then i will start packs you should be able to hear the passengers crawling about right now if they could <laughs> because for some reason the airbus has uh, closed the passenger door that's better all right I will be back as quickly as I can. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. This is your flight attendant speaking. At this time, please be sure to make sure all large carry-on items are in the overhead bins and your small items are underneath the seat in front of you. If you have any trouble or need any assistance, please don't hesitate to let a flight attendant know and we would be happy to help you. If the overhead bin is full after you put your carry-on inside of it, please close the bin as a courtesy to other passengers. Once all your items are put away, please clear the aisle and sit down in your seat to allow other passengers to find their seats as well. If you are seated in an emergency exit row, please read the exit seating responsibilities in the safety card in the seat back in front of you. 
Please make sure you are willing and able to perform the actions required. If you are not able or prefer not to perform these actions, please let a flight attendant know so you can be reseated. You are free to use your portable electronic devices during the boarding process. We ask that larger electronic devices are stowed once we depart from the gate. Thank you and welcome aboard. Alright, I'm back again. So sorry about the little delay. Um, so let's see how we're going. Oh yeah, I wanted to uh, uh, had to. Let me see if I can do the screencasting. I mean the <laughs> the the thing up there is going to disappear. My uh, try to now you can see it. All right, so here's X pilot. Here is. So here's the flight status. They're very satisfied. So I can show you all of this. Let me just see. Let me just see if I can put in my browser. By laptop. I could. Perfect. And you can see it. And there's no screen. I mean, I'm only f doing 30 frames per second. So <laughs> that might be the reason. But nevertheless... All right, so let me show you. Um, this is the flight plan. I'm going to draw that to my other screen. Now you can hear my kids in the background. So just wanted to let you know that if you don't like kids being around making noise and all that in the stream, that I'm pretty sure I can say that my stream is not going to be for you then. Definitely. All right, let's go to flight plan. So we're going to go not LLPD. We're going to go from. Uh, let me see. Ikit to e EKVG, and the alternative is EGPO Echo Golf Papa Oscar or Echo Golf Papa Lima. I oh know it's almost the same distance. Departure time. Um, solo, so it's 14. Should be 10 solo now, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not very good with solo time, but let's say it's 10. So let's say... No, it's 12. Let's say... Uh, let's say... Uh, 12... 30. Roughly two hours en route, fuel available, I think we have about three hours, something like that. Cruise speed, uh, cruise altitude is going to be flight level 346. I'm not sure if I can read out the cruise speed here. 448. Let's put that in. 448. Alright. And then we need the plan itself. We're ready to go when you are. I'm not ready. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight 728. Our flight time will be roughly two hours and 30 minutes. Please note the cabin door is now closed. We ask that you make sure that all devices are in airplane mode and your larger devices are now shut down and stowed. If you have not already, please fasten your seatbelt and verify it is low and tight across your lap. Your tray tables and seatbacks must be in the full upright and locked position for departure. Cabin crew secure doors for departure. I'm gonna work down here. Oh. Plug in ground handling studio control widget. This is Let's see, uh... Oh. I'm gonna drive those, I'm sorry about that. That should drive away as well. Alright, let me see. The plan. The pilot. The uh, send and receive. All right, so let's connect. So we are called SAS one two eight. I think was the 
name on terrain and everything else seems to be fine there we go connected connect to device server file flight plan eq view 1230 13. Good. two hours three hours then 3400 equipment suffix pretty sure it's e but let's uh file flight plan there we go all right so let me uh put this out of the way settings push to talk and uh let me see there we go Now I should have connection says seven two eight, and uh, we are very much ready to to go. All right, so let me go into the game screen once again because I think it's perhaps a little bit more stable. Let's go into the flight deck. So let's uh, get this aircraft running. We have ground power. Let's. Utilize that. That's uh now we have the passengers on board and we are we're not ready. We're not finished fueling, so let's do that. Let me just pull up the tablet. Let's take our check our fuel levels. Let's see if Total fuel on board is going to be 11.2, let's just say 12. Total is open IC. Let's see if this matches. Let me see if I can find my... Let's see. Maybe next page. No, definitely not. It should be here somewhere, my... Um, <coughs> Oh, that's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find my payload there. Do some bank. Let me see. Um, estimated to fuel weight 69.70. So around 70 ish. Take off weight 80. All right. So let's see. Loading info. We have about 100 passengers aboard. Let's distribute them relatively equally. And then we should have 10,000 kilograms. Let me see how much can we have here. Let's see if we put 5,000 here and 5,000 here. Then we ate uh, in that 69, 7, 80, which is exactly what we wanted. And our fuel, final total fuel on board should be 11.12. Let's put on 12 instead. Now let's just put 11.5. That should be okay. Quick refuel. Set the load settings. All right, let's remove this for a little bit going to need it in a little while let me just turn up the screen well, let me see four yeah let's start the apu all right so i'm going to do something else i'm going to turn off the aircrafts um that is that is so a and that is a player there here we can see flying over all right so now we have refueled we can put seat belts on no smoking emergency exits we're going to set the strobe to auto for now let's say let's just finish prepping the airplane let's uh, set it to lock to norm 
All right. So that should be it for the airplane. One more thing. Just set the ADRS. That. Now, obviously, I'm not a real world pilot, so all of this is not going to reflect any kind of real world procedures or anything like that. Let's test the fire system for the uh, APU now that we're here. Works. Let's take for engine one. Works. Let's test for engine two. Works. Let's turn on the radios. Other one is here. Here. And let's set. Now we're not uh, put that on. And we're not ready to take off yet. So let's see. It's one. One two two point eight. I think is. Unicom. Let me just check my French mission. It works. All right. Same. I don't think that anything else we need to do. Oh yeah, let's just uh, go to the co-pilot seat and do the same thing. No. Oh. I don't like it when the mouse doesn't really capture prob properly. I don't know why the there seems to be some kind of problem with the the co-pilot uh, monitors. Bye bye, veggie food or whatever it was that it said. All right, seat bells, no smoking. Let's. Uh, we don't have a natus, so let's just see. Airport. That's. EKYT. See what the we have um stated three forty five knots. All right, three hundred variable to forty. Q and H is ten seven. There we go. 10, 7. All right, let's set up the FMS. Let's open that and open our plan. AV tab up. Toggle tablet over here. And uh, let's get our plan ready. So let me show you what I was talking about. So we can see we have the CFM leap 1318. 33 that's the engines the eric cycle is 2107 that's the good one we have an old eric cycle here which we're not going to use and then we're going to go through this rip diff diff rip so we're starting at data let's look at the position monitor nothing put in yet but irs gps that, that's going to we can look at closest airports here. yeah obviously Ikid is the closest one. <laughs> so, uh, data. Yes, let's go to... Let me check the second page. Runways. We have a lot of different stuff that we can use if you want to. We're going to go for init. So, let me show you. Normally, you would put in some kind... You wouldn't put anything in company road here. You could call it something, but you wouldn't really use it. Oh, let me just pull it down a little bit. Sorry about that. There you go. Now we can easiest, more easily see. But... I have made a plan, so we are going to use, call that fourth, E, K, Y, T, E, K, B, B, G, zero, one. If you can read it, there we go. M, my, looks like the right one. Let's check it out. Ikit, L, Legum, Msev, 
Chukumo. Top of Climb. Kivip. Sol. Valdi. Kani. And Mai. Well, doesn't seem like it has. Yeah, there, here. Kani Mai. That's, I think it's if we're going to. Alright. So, uh, that's a good plan. Let's load it up. We are still called Scandinavian. Seven. Two eight. If I'm not mistaken. Let me check the front page. Scandinavian seven two eight. Yes. Let's put that in. Cost index that was ten. And our cruise flight level was three forty. That was the init. So D I F. Flight plan. Now we don't need to do much here, we're going to put in something for departure. So we can choose between 0, ADL or 26R. Now, I'm not sure what it planned for me if it's mentioned here. Let me just check. 0, ADL. And we have wind... What was it? 340? Yeah. So, zero ADL, that's probably a, a good choice here. Let's take that. There are no standard departures. <laughs> and there's no transition, that's just a runway. So, let's insert that. And now we have a flight plan discontinuity. Let me, uh... Let's see if I can... Departure. Zero ADL, yes. No standard. And there are also... Probably no transitions as well. Fair enough. Move that. Move that. Put that in. Let's see. Departure... No, see it's insert, and from here we're going to go to AAL. Back it a little bit. There we go. Not sure why we have some. We have to be above fifteen hundred. I think I can manage that. Let's just Set our altitude right now. Let's just set it to my ordinary 6,000 feet for now. All right, let's continue planning. So, EKVG, what did we have planned there? Let me just get the tablet back. Doesn't say here, it should say here 30. Let's put that in. Arrival. Take the ILSC. 30. <laughs> and the standard arrival. Let's see what we have. We have Maya Robot. I think it was Maya we came from. If I'm not mistaken. So let's put that in. See if we got a discontinuity. We certainly don't. Perfect. And we even have a hold R and if we need to do that. Alright. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Shouldn't yeah, turn it down. Let's go to secondary fight plan. Copy active. That's it. We didn't, I don't want to do anything else. So that was a diff. So let's go to fuel prediction. Let's see. And uh, this is going to be auto-tuned, so I'm not going to do anything here. Then we're going to go to uh, performance. 
And this is where you could use something like um, Topcat to calculate the takeoff. But fortunately, let me just set that to 1520 as well. Ah, now we have GPS primary. Perfect. Um... Uh, Fortunately, Tolis comes with its own, so we can use that. So let's go to... Yeah, performance. Something... Uh, no, yeah, I know what it is. We need to go in here. To put that in. I, I, I missed the... Uh, I had this... Rip. So, let's see. Zero fuel weight and... Zero fuel. That's what we have here. 69.8. 69. Point eight or decimal eight slash twenty three point five twenty three point five put that in block fuel did I put in the uh, let me just go back here no I always forget the alternative uh I'll do alternate let's uh bring out the tablet EGPO so E G E O. Oh. There we go. Yeah, I know GPS primary. Thank you for telling me that. Wind. Wind request. There we go. And unfortunately, I cannot request anything on descent or anything like that. But we were at performance. I think. Or were we at init B? We were here, yeah. All right, so we need to put in, and that's 11.2, 11 11 I think it was, we had in the plants. So let's take that. 11.2. There we go. Perfect. Did I start up the... Yeah, I did. I didn't, but I wanted to. <laughs> All right. There we go. Let's turn on the... Crew oxygen supply now that we're here. Now we need the toys, I think, again. Let's go to. Now we have all of that. Let's go to performance here. Alright, so I've put that in. So let's put in flaps. I think we're just going to go for our OnePlus F on the active flight plan here. Zero eight l So we have uh, 25.2. We have flex and. Up 0.8, so flex 59. And, uh, oh sorry, not. Yeah, let's just put that in there. And, <clears throat> uh, flaps is 1. I don't know if you can put 1 plus F in. Let's try that. And, uh, up 0 0.8. Zero point eight. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, I just set it to one. That was also what I was expecting. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's put in the V1, VR, and uh, V2. One, four, two. One, five, three. You can also use the Namir keypad here, so a little bit easier. Actually, you can use the whole keyboard. <laughs> one, five, six. That should be it. That should be all. Performance. We have data. Init. DI. Flight plan. Secondary flight plan. Copy active. Radio nav. Riff. R. Nothing to do here. Um, init B. We have that. Taxi 0 0.2, let's put, did I, I think, pretty sure I put something else in, let's just take that, AV tab, let's see if it tells us in the top page, uh, taxi, 120, no, 0 0.2, that's fine. All right. That was a need fuel prediction. That was 
we need B and then P performance takeoff. We can look at the climb that's managed. Cruise. Descend. And at some point we're going to fill the let me let's just fill it in now because I mean Why not? While we can, let's see. So no not total it's A B tab. Go in here, airport, search. VG. Search. Let's see what we got. Let's update that as well. So we have uh, Q and H is 1014. Let me just check on our passengers if they are. Oh, we are expected to, to go in 20 minutes. So there's enough time. See, we're still connected and the flight plan is submitted. Temperature. Uh, 10. Fairly cold. We're going to change these things as we get closer to... <clears throat> to, uh, to the airport. To the Faroe Islands. So 170 variable to 50. So it's... 170... Oh, we don't have any... Uh, yeah, alright, so... Uh, Let's just put in, I don't know, variable 10. Let's put in 50. And somewhere between 170 and 250, maybe 200. I don't know. Let's put 15 in. Light level, that's transition, that's good enough. We have, we're definitely going to go for full config here. Barrow. Uh, let's put that in because we know which airport, which landing way we're going to land. You can see here, they are pretty short. I mean, eight kilometers, that's okay, but... Uh, let's take a look. We have an airport chart that we're not going to use right now. Uh, I just needed the approach for... Uh this one because I needed the ILS decision height that's 207. Two, oh, seven there we go all right let's go for ekit instead because we need some stuff here so let's airport information and we are here so we're going to take off from zero eight left which is this one so we're going to taxi all the way down from zero eight right all the way down to um taxiway echo so i'm going to leave that Like that. All right, let's just remove it because I need some. St All right, so uh, we now have the turn on the APU bleed. Let's turn off the external power. Let's turn on the beacon nav light for now. Let's get the ground handling and. Uh, drive away those as well to turn on the pumps what else do we have uh, let me just just check outside to see if they have moved oh, the ground power still there go into the toilet and remove it as well there we go all right that was that don't think we need anything else let's plan our pushback so 
so we're going to go, we're going to go down here somewhere. And yes, that is me you can hear, so let's go to brown handling control, hide all. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, let's do the pushback. <clears throat> Scandinavians 2-8, add Echo Kilo Yanko Tanko, pushback and engine start. Alright. Ground to <coughs> combat, tow is Doesn't seem to be. <coughs> doesn't seem to be very hot today, so I'm just going to leave that there. Let's bring up the tablet. Even though I think I can manage to take the <laughs> that trip. Let me just check if they are all closed. Let's see, close, 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 close. Yes, they are. Bolt sound, just in general. No. Seems to be fine. go and now it should be on I hope <laughs> and unfortunately that's the only way you can do it right now so we're ready let's remove the parking brake starting pushback you may start your engines at your discretion I will let's get this engine come on there we go let's start engine 2 let's take an outside view ladies and gentlemen please direct your attention to the front of the aircraft for a safety demonstration when the seatbelt light is on please make sure that your seatbelt is fastened low and tight across your lap to fasten insert the metal fittings into one another Tighten by pulling on the loose end of the strap. To release your seatbelt, lift the upper portion of the buckle. In the event that the seatbelt light is not on, we suggest that you keep your seatbelt fastened in case of unexpected turbulence. There are several emergency exits on this aircraft. To familiarize yourself with the emergency exits on this aircraft, please refer to the safety card in the seat back pocket in front of you. In some cases, your nearest exit might be behind you. If we need to evacuate the aircraft, there is lighting on the floor to guide you towards the exit. In the event that the cabin loses pressure, an oxygen mask will drop right in front of you. To start the flow of oxygen, pull the mask towards you. Place it firmly over your nose and mouth and secure the elastic band behind your head. Tighten the straps if necessary and breathe normally. Although the bag does not inflate, oxygen is Engine 2 avail. Let's if go for engine 1. If you're child or someone who requires assistance, secure your mask first and then assist others. Keep your mask on until a member of the crew advises you it's safe to remove it. In the unlikely event of a water landing, a light vest is located in a pouch under your seat or between the armrests. When instructed to do so, open the plastic pouch and remove the vest. Flip it over your head. Wrap the straps around your waist and buckle at the front. Pull the strap to tighten. To inflate the vest, pull firmly on the red cord Zero only when exiting the aircraft. If your life vest does not inflate automatically, blow into the mouth. Operation and complete. Set the pocket the vest break. Is with a whistle and light. If necessary, your seat cushion can be as a secondary flotation device. 
Pull the cushion from the seat, slip your arms into the straps, and hug the cushion to your chest. Please securely stow your personal items. Make sure your seatbelts are fastened and seat bags and tray tables are in their full upright position. We remind you that this is a non-smoking flight. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the smoke detectors located in the lavatories is prohibited by law. All of this information and more can be found in the safety card located in the back of the Stand by. Please stop reading this and letting a cabin member know if you have any questions. Thank you for flying with us again, and we hope you enjoy your flight. Let me just be sure that, uh... Two is disconnected and one has been, has been removed. Hand signals on the right. Until next time. Let's see if we can see him. We should be able to. Yeah, there he is. Bye bye. Alright, let's see. Five. Alright, so let's get all of this going. Taxi. One way turn lights. Everything else seems to be in order. Alright, so let me get my feet up in my. Nice position here. Seat belts, no smoking. We're not there yet, so uh, turn on off the <clears throat> parking brake. I'm pretty sure I can manage to <laughs> get us going. It was zero eight right, I think yeah, it must be. Scandinavian 728 at Echo Kilo Yanko Tenko, crossing runway 08 left. Correction, 08 right. Ten knots for ground speed for. Now let me just do that, set the chronometer, because we need to have it going for about five minutes for the engine. We don't have strobe light is on. Yeah, but that's, that's takeoff procedure. We're not ready to take off yet. All right, let's set the parking brake here and do the before takeoff procedure, left and right landing lights. This one, five, I think it is. Yes, I'm going to use that for takeoff. No wing strobe is on. Let's just set that to auto now. No slide takeoff transponder TCAS. I can think I said it. I did. Um, Seatbelt signs, and we're doing takeoff with packs. Stop and reset. Let's see. We have four, four and a half minutes. I think we can safely say that we are ready to take off. All right. Let's do a flight control check now that we are standing here. Rudder. Pitch. Ailerons or roll. Works. Alright, let's set all our stuff that we need. We arm the ground spoiler. 
that flaps to one that park uh, auto brake to max let's load the cabin crew and let's finalize the takeoff test takeoff config yes and reset Yeah, I'm, I cannot do that while I... Alright. Scandinavian 728 at Echo Kilo Yanko Tenko. Take off at runway 08 left. Alright. Let's roll onto the runway. And we can do a rolling takeoff this time. Now, in these situations here where you're taxiing around and all that, I think it's it's actually pretty nice to have the uh, the VR headset because you can look around and you have sort of a, a more real feel for the aircraft. But for example, I did the I tried to do the flight from Copenhagen to uh, to um, to Chicago or here. And that's, I mean, that's too much. I mean, it's too long of time you're sitting with that headset on your, on the head. All right, stabilize at N1, at 50% N1. Stick forward, about half forward, go to flex. Between 80 and 100, I'm releasing the stick slightly. 80 knots. Rotate. Positive climb, gear up. Throttle to climb, level out, so as you can see I'm trying my best to follow the flight director. See when we get our S. show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, that's the flight director. So here we have this. Now we can take the flaps all the way out. Now it should want me to level out. There we go. up a little bit let's turn on the autopilot now all right now that we have uh, gear up so now we can turn these lights <laughs> off we don't need them so we have thrust chronometer 
throttle. Standard. Now we're at six thousand. Almost six thousand. All right, we don't need the stuff for kit anymore. Let's remove that. But we do need something for EKVG, so we need the airport information. <laughs> That's very easy, only one runway. <laughs> we came from 30, I think it was 30. Let's see. Approach. No, it was, yeah, it was. Uh, I'm just checking. Say up here. No. Thirty. We should be coming from Roba. If we need to, we can set a hold here at Roba. Please don't share that kind of, sorry to say, crap on my channel. Alright, now we are heading there. Scandinavian 728, cleared runway 08 left at Echo Kilo Yanko Tenko. In an avian 728 climbing to flight level 320. Pretty sure it was 320. Maybe it was 340. <laughs> 340, obviously. It's an avian 728 correction, flight level 340. Alright, let's do that. clouds hello let's turn on the weather radar now that i only i just came to think about it when let's see if we can see anything no See, it, it keeps saying GPS primary here, and I have absolutely no idea why it does that. Up that one scale. We're going to go through some cloud cover, and the outside temperature is... Well, it's high enough, but I'm going to turn on the engine anti-ice anyway, just to be above the clouds. Let's see, quick cruise, left, right, landing light. Yeah, I turned that off. Gentlemen, we have now passed 2,000 feet. You may turn on larger portable electronic devices. This is also a reminder to please keep your 
your seatbelt fastened throughout the duration of the flight and do not form a line near the laboratory. This aircraft is equipped with onboard Wi-Fi. If you wish to connect to the Wi-Fi, you will be required to pay a small fee. We do offer complimentary in-flight TV thanks to our partners. Connect to the Wi-Fi to find out more information. <laughs> So now our passengers can roam around freely. So let me just uh, go to the screencast and let me show you why I like using this. So here we are at the get the. So here we have the. We had the climb, our expected arrival, satisfied. So let's take a look at our passengers. So I like the names that they have put in here. They're actually de depending on where you take off to some extent. So I can tell you some names that we can um, point out right away. They could be to some extent be Swedish as well, but nevertheless, let's see. So we have Birgit Skogård. Mark Eriksson, Ulf Jebsen, Rudolf Bach, Brian Robinson, it could also be Brian Robinson, but probably it's Brian Robinson. We have Albin Williamson, Jakob Clausen, that's also to some extent a Danish name. Michelle Chuchupolo, Chuchupolo, probably uh, Greek. I Hansen, Gaia Rehmer, almost like a dama. Ella <laughs> uh, Graham, Esperanza Heart. So these are the passengers. I'm not going to go through all 100 names, but as you can see, we have different. You can choose. He's 53 years old. He's doing business. He's not hungry. Somewhat tired. He's content. He's not thirsty, and he has his seatbelt on. So these are the passengers that we have in the airplane right now, in the Neo that I have uh, placed. Now it's not exactly as it should be. I think I chose the wrong <laughs> airplane, actually. But nevertheless, I mean, it's okay. All right, so that's basically how PAX works. And that's why it's called what it's called, passenger and crew experience. So uh, let me go back to, uh, let me just show you how it looks in me pilot. There we go. So we have Euro FFS. I'm not sure if we're going to go into that uh, that area. Let me start up that spy. I'll show you that. I'm not sure whether it can. I'm just trying to see if I can find our flight. Yeah, there we are. So we're going to go into EN. We're going to go into EGPX E just for a short while. Maybe because I cannot see. I can only see my uh, direct line of sight. So we might avoid Scottish airspace entirely. I'm not sure about that. We're going to see. Now, one of the really cool things, now I can't show you that because we don't have any airplanes near us right now. One of the things that made me say, that's him, is it. That's him is for me. It's because there are two, two things here. Let me show you. I really can't show you because we can't hear anyone, but the loudness knobs here, they are directly connected. Let me just see if I can show you that with, um, now you should be able to see uh, the X-Pilots. Let me see settings, the aircraft volume um, controls. Knobs. That's for X planes. Let me see if I can. 
see. No, oh, that was wrong. Yeah, look at that. When I turn it down, and I can turn it up. That is, a, I think, that is really, really, really cool. Really cool. Let me turn the uh, volume on my mic up just a little bit so it goes into the green area. About there. Maybe just plus five. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. All right, let's do some spoilers. We have all of that. Auto brake is off. So we have ignition. Oh, did I forget that? No. Oh, that's probably because we're going through. I turned on uh, in engine anti ice, but I can turn that off now. Let's see. Yeah. All right. That's it. Welcome to a nice flight to the Faroe Islands. All right, let's see. Let, let me show you that spy. So here we have that spy. If you want to, you can you can download this program for yourself, and then you can follow me. If you want to. Now you can even see here the active. Um, airspace is right now so we have uh, the center here and we have your control west your control west here and we have a your control west here we don't have any um, we have ne Newcastle approach departure but we don't have any in the Scottish airspace and we don't have any in the uh, no Norwegian or Polaris airspace and we don't have anyone in the Reykjavik airspace, we, and we're going to go to uh, up to here. That's uh, Sorvak Vaga. That's where we're going to land. So you can see here, this is me. Let's see flight details. Scandinavian 728 from Olbo, Ikut to EKVG um, Vaga. We are airborne. That's my name. Pilot rating. I don't have any pilot rating uh, because this is Batsim. I am trying, sort of, to get a rating, but I'm not sure I really have the time. We have the route and direct to AL, L, my direct to Vega, beginner, and that's it. And also, if you want to, you can see my stats. Yeah, I know. You can see here, I am P0, so no rating. I have flown 24, 25 hours to pilot. So, that's it. And I, you can just see your own map, but you already know that. Like I said, you could follow me here if you want to. You can see my true airspeed, my flight rolls, whatever you want to know, it should be here. And you can you cannot see the route that I'm taking. It cannot show you that, but it can show you the route that I have taken. So yeah, you get detail. You can and we can even get the meta for. But we already knew that. <laughs> Uh, we can also get it for EKCH if you wanted to do that. I mean, you can do a lot here in uh, that spy, but I use it primarily to figure out which active um, airspaces and controllers and all that we have. So uh, yeah, let's. Uh, Take a look outside. Look at that. And I'm from this is Oslo, I'm pretty sure we have right here. Big big city. Look at that. I mean 
there's no way, no way in hell that, um, take an inside look here. There's no way in hell I know that, that, um, X-Plane could ever compete visually with, with, with flight sim. There's just no way at all. So this is the view that you have over Norway as we're flying over it. And like I said, I know that the visuals of X-Plane 11 really can't compete with the, the visuals of uh, Microsoft Flight Sim, the new Flight Sim. But cruise procedure, all right. Fence pointer, cast, but I already did that. Yeah, all right. Let's take the other seat. Look at that. Like I said, I know that um, X-Plane 11 by no means can compete with, with Microsoft Flight Sim. I know that. I mean, it's it's really... <laughs> it's really easy, right? It is. It's, it's, it's Microsoft Flight Sim, it's, it's much newer than uh, X-Plane 11. The graphics, it's just incredible. It really is extraordinarily beautiful i think that explain 11 is okay i mean you can add some mods into it some plugins that will make like the clouds down there look better and the scenery is also fair even the or original scenery i mean it's, it's in my opinion it's pretty okay fair That's the part I really, really love about PAX, passenger and crew experience, that stuff. When you have a long flight, for example, I mean, in my opinion, it's, it's imperative that you can do such a thing. All right. So yeah, like I said, um, one of what, what X-Plane can do instead is that it, it's a well-known and well-built um, um, simulator game, whatever you want to call it. I call it sim. So there's a lot of really, really, really good well-built airplanes that you can use. I mean, like this, for instance, the Tolis. There are so many options that you have. You can do go-around procedures, you can do holes. There are minor things that is really missing in it. But other than that, I mean, it's incredible. So that's one of the things that that's why I like flying using uh i mean i like flying in in uh, in in uh, explain compared to microsoft flight sim the i know now that a company and i really can't remember its name they are making an airplane an a320 for microsoft flight sim which is going to be as far as i know comparable to uh to uh, to uh to to the tolis system the airbus in uh, in um let's see if i turned off the off thank you <laughs> turn this down a little bit we don't need them to be very bright um comparable to the tolis Fidelity. So, so we are 
just had to do some maintenance here. So we are getting there in Microsoft Flight Sim, but honestly, in my opinion, even using uh, fly-by-wire is very, very, very excellent mod. It's still not the same. It still cannot do the same stuff as the TOLIS. And obviously, because you can... I mean, TOLIS has probably been several years in developing this uh, airplane here. Whereas uh, Fly-By-Wire, they have only had to tinker with the... Uh, let's go to the co-pilot seat. Uh, only had a couple of... Uh, couple of years now. Or not even a, a year or something like that to tinker with uh, with uh, with an airplane that has already been built meaning that they don't even they not only do they have to design new procedures and, and new stuff for uh, the uh, for for the airbus in in the the, the vanilla Air airbus in in microsoft flight sim they also have to work around the designs that a Sobo made or whatever company made the, the Airbus for, for Sobo. So, uh, I mean, I'm really not trying to degrade the work that they have done because it is incredible. I mean, honest to God, incredible work that they have done. I'm very, very impressed with it. But saying it as it, as it is, there's just... I don't. I mean, my wonders of difference between the Tolis Airbus and the uh, and the Asobo Airbus, even with fly-by-wire. That's just the way it is. You, all the stuff that you need to do um, in order to make a relatively uneventful and and, uh, and functional Vatsim flight, you have it here in the Tolis Airbus. You don't have. You definitely don't have it in the vanilla um, Airbus. I mean, even the autopilot. In, in the vanilla Airbus, it's just flunky. It's yeah. The the, the Tolis Airbus just works, and Tolis have announced that they're going to make an A340. So the the A340 is is the old, if you will. It's outdated, um, long hauler um, for the Airbus family. <coughs> If you don't know, let me uh, let me let me explain it as to my, to the best of my ability. So the Airbus family had a row of wide body, long haul airplanes with four engines. Now, obviously, if a four engine ship burns more fuel than a two engine ship. Sorry, not ship, but airplane. Um, so uh, obviously. <clears throat> Just like anyone else, any company making transportation devices, Airbus themselves also had to adjust to... And my wife just had to ask me a couple of questions. So all the old Airbus family planes for long hauling, that is the A340 and the A380. <clears throat> they were wide body two aisle I think it was a double aisle um, four engine airplanes but given that engine systems has developed tremendously and uh, obviously also that Airbus has developed new engines but, but helped in that and, and they opted for a new design of engines so I mean, it's hard to compare, but if you look at some of my other videos... <clears throat> Alright, let, let me take that for a while now. If you haven't already watched my two videos that came before. So, so the idea of what I'm doing here is that we're going to travel around in Denmark, the Danish, the Kingdom of Denmark, that is. So we went from Kastrup to Bilon, and from Bilon to Holborg, that is EKCH, EKBI, and EKYT. 
now we're going from EK, EKYT to EKVG. So that's uh, Vaga in the Faroe Islands, which is also part of the Danish the Kingdom of Denmark. From there, we're going to fly from Vaga to, I think, an even smaller airport, perhaps, maybe a little bit bigger, but certainly a small one, small airport in Greenland. So obviously I cannot say to you, uh, if you haven't watched these <laughs> videos already, you should go do it now because then you would miss the stream. But afterwards I would suggest that you go and watch these videos if you like what I'm doing here. Because then you'll get a little bit extra context of what I'm doing. But the idea is that I want to fly all the way around the world. If we can. And I think we can do it. I haven't checked it out, we're going to plan it as we go. But right now we are, we're flying around in Denmark. So from... Greenland, we're going to take an airport, a relatively big airport, I think, in the United States, perhaps JFK or um, the uh, or the O'Hare, um, Chicago airport, something like that. Then we're going to fly across different states in the United States, not all of them, but sort of take a midway route all over. And then we're going to take from the United States to, I don't know, where we go from there. But the idea is to hit all of the major places in the world. So we're going to go all the way from the United States to some of the islands there, down to, if we can, um, uh, sorry, I just lost it there. Um, Australia, from Australia if we can, to some of Asia, from, and that also goes for, for, not Moscow, but Moskva, Moskva, in, uh, in Russia, and then we're going to go from there perhaps to some parts of um, Africa, we're going to try to go, I mean, obviously I cannot land at every major airport in the world, but trying to take sort of a broad, trip around the world as much as we can obviously on VATSIM now I haven't really decided yet whether I really want to do it all on VATSIM or if I want to use uh, pilot to ATC uh, because one of the advantages of pilot to ATC is that you have full coverage of ATCs all around the world no matter where you go it's not perfect for transatlantic you, you're not going to being asked to answer questions about um, um, the waypoints that you are. So basically, when you're going doing transatlantic flights, you have radio coverage for most of the way, but you don't have ra radar coverage. So uh, the uh, Gatwick and Gander controllers, and also part of the um, controller in in iceland they are working together so you are going to we have routes all over the the atlantic that is basically just um waypoints if you will of of um coordinates on the uh coordinates on on on, on the globe so uh <laughs> Whenever you um, you fly a transatlantic, the idea is that you report back to the controller which waypoint you're at, and that's even. Let me just show you because the others have a excellent tool for that. Excellent tool that you can use in the uh, in the uh, MC MCDU MacDo. Let me show you. So we are here at um, the cruise phase progress. So we have a report button here. If we go into that, you can see we are at Sulu Oscar Lima at flight level 340. We are heading to Valdi, Vixa, Alpha, Lima, Delta, India. Our expected rival is 1407 Sulu. And the next waypoint we 
not going to is Connie. Uh, why can't I remember what C is? C, Oscar, November, November, Yankee. Why can't I remember what C is? I already forget C. Let me get the called the um, phonetic Charlie <laughs> so it's Charlie Oscar November November Yankee and 1430 Zulu so the idea is that because uh, the, the the Gatwick and the Gander controller, they can't follow you with radar. You, on the other hand, is responsible for telling. <laughs> responsible for telling uh, the controller where you are, what's your next waypoint, and when you are getting there. And the idea is that the Gatwick controller or the Gander controller can then try to separate the different uh, airplanes as much as they can because you have to realize that many of these airplanes will be following the same lines if they're flying the same place especially when you're flying some of these uh, designed routes the uh, transatlantic uh, um, routes that we have so so for example if you're following one of these routes the Gatwick controller could tell you uh, to, uh, let's say we are going to November 6-2, no, that cannot be, but November 5-3, um, Whiskey 1-2. Then he could tell, and, and we are too close to another airplane, he could tell, tell us uh, Scandinavian 7-8, Hold and November 5-2, Whiskey 06, something like that. Then I would go into my my flight, flight management system. I would go into uh, the flight plan. I would find whatever waypoint it was. Then I would put in a hold. Let me just give you an example. Let's go into uh, here. Airports. Let's see. For example, we have a hold point here at Robo. Let's find that waypoint. Oh, so we. Let me just see what it said there. Alright, this is someone who was taking off. Alright, so let me see if I can figure out where exactly that waypoint is going to be. It's going to be just before the... And that's what we have here, right? That's the... Uh, that's my... So... Uh, yeah, that's the one we have here. So we could put in a hole there as well. But we don't have Robo anywhere. Which is interesting. Mugenes, Vega, that's the one we have here. 
VG. Alright, but you, I could put in a hold somewhere around there. I could put it at Connie if I wanted to. So there's a lot of options, but but then the uh, the uh, Gander controller or Gatwick controller could tell me to do a hold if for a minute or so, something like that, in order to distance get more distance between the airplanes. So and um, the pilot to HC just recognizes any of that as ordinary. Um, as ordinary um, sorry just let's check <laughs> as ordinary <coughs> sorry as ordinary um Radar contacts. Sorry. I'm feeling a bit slow today. I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. And just get the constraints on so I can see them. It says 4,000. Below 4,000. Let's... Uh be prepared and set it to 4,000 right now. But I'll go and get a cup of coffee and be right back. So it's saying that my, let me just check the plan for a moment, go to 40 and uh, let's get the Red Valde, Connie, that's our time of descent, top of descent, Mickiness. Oh, that's why. Let me put on... Um, doesn't say what... That's called CI-30 Zulu. It's Baker. So we could... We could actually set a hole that Meganess. If we wanted to. But that's why we have uh, such a good time to... To perform our descent. And then we can go back to Meganess if you want to do... There's a hold there planned. If we need to do that. So we can hold there. And then we're going to go all the way back to... Uh, to the to route here. Alright. So, so let me just show you. If I wanted to, I could go in here. Let's get that plan. No, let's, let's keep it up. So you can see what's going on. I'm going to go to... Connie, M Muganess. And then I'm going to open the tab as well. So let me show you. Um, so that would be a hold at Muganess for 111. And it's a... How on earth are you supposed to do that? Well, it's a... Uh, a 
Let me see. Robo is uh, D22 MF. Well, that's going. Meganess. Hold. That's 111. So now we have uh, whatever time we want to put in. We also say compute it. It would say 288. That's not true. It's but 111. And it's a right hand turn if I'm not mistaken. So now we have a hold here at uh, Mykines. And then I can show you what happens when we get there. Oh, we're already at Valdi. Let's just take a look here and see. Yeah, I, I couldn't. F ah. <laughs> that was. Uh, EKV. There we go. I need to check something. Did I put in some... Ah, that's why. Let's put in... Um, right. <laughs> oh, some key that I rarely use. If this does anything... Oh, let's put that in. They're brave. Alright. That's why <laughs> it... Let's see how we're doing. They're satisfied still. That's good. All right, so we got the meta. That's uh, 185 knots. Now we are getting somewhere. All right, let's put that in. We're going to go uh, performance. Yeah. So our Q and H is 1013. Temperature is and still. Wind is one eighty five. And everything else seems to be fine. Alright. <clears throat> now we are a little better updated. Yeah, I think it still has problems showing the uh, 
Hacks. Bottle heart. Yeah, I still can't see it. It's it's it is down here somewhere, but you cannot see it because it gets removed, unfortunately. That would show you all the different information that you would like to see. Alright, let's see. Um, <coughs> the packs, which you still have the seat belt signs on. They're probably <laughs> a little bit. Oh, there. Now you can. Now I can see it. You can't. And that's because it gets removed whenever I go into. Uh, but I can't select something. Aircraft problem delay diversion display. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's the way um, explain uh, covers the screen. So it should be down at the bottom, but unfortunately, it's not. Well, we are almost getting there. Let's take a look outside, see if we can see anything of interest. Well, the clouds. <laughs> and water. Let's do a flyby. So while we're in here, now I can show you the difference. Going back to the discussion before about how uh, the design of airplanes has changed in the last couple of years or so. I mean, practically, ever since we learned that we need to really think about how we are spending our fossil fuels or perhaps even not spending it um, <coughs> engine designers have had to go in a different direction now when I say different what I mean is that before I mean, it has always been so for engine designers, whether it's engines for cars, or engines for airplanes, or helicopters, whatever. The least amount of fuel you can spend on getting as far as possible has always been the case. But, a little while ago, the idea was that we could spend as much fuel as we wanted, because we don't need it, right? We don't need to be careful about our fuel. We can just spend it. That's not the case here. Uh, the case is now that we don't just need to spend less fuel to lower cost. We simply need to spend less fuel to spend less fuel. And so engine designers had to go in a little bit of a different direction. Now the idea was that they had to... What's up landing? Or they would have to make our planes, make the engines produce more thrust with less fuel. Now, obviously, oh, that's always the case, right? It's always the case that <laughs> we need to do that. But it's been more... Um, been more important now to do that, to do exactly that. So... Um, the new engine design, if you look at it, they are much bigger. So essentially they can pull more air in and, and compress it and push it out in the other end. That's the idea. But what also has happened is that Airbus and Boeing and well, whichever company, I mean, the biggest two are probably Airbus and Boeing right now, they had had to uh, change the way they design airplanes. So, 
airliners. So with the new engine design, all the new long haulers, wide body long haulers, it's a two engine system. As far as I know, both both the A330 and the A350, they are a, a double engine, two engine seated uh, planes. Whereas the, uh, like I said, the A340 and the A380. The A380 is a, it's a, it's a different class of airplane. It's really, really huge. Um, it's probably a three or four aisle, aisle um, airplane. But the, uh, the, the, the new long haulers, they are double engine, not four engine. But in, instead, obviously the airplane can carry a lot more fuel. The engines are also larger. They are the new kind of design. Both the Pratt and Whitney and the Leap engines are the same kind of design. If we co and that's why I talked about the previous videos because that was before I got the new engine. So so there's for Airbus there are two kinds. There's the classic engine option CO and the new engine option Neo. So it's the Neo we aim right now. If you look at the classic engine, you can look at it's much, it's longer. Um, but it's also much uh, narrow, not as, not as big, it's not as open as the new engine option. So we should be just about a place where we can start our descent. But we have a lot of space yet, so I'm not going to freight it in any, any way. So yeah, this is the Neo we are flying right now, and... Yeah, uh, not Airbus. Um, Tolis is also, also going to make the uh, A340, which is a. I don't think it's a Neo engine design. It's an older four engine. But what would be really cool if, if Tolis just jumped in and made the A350, because that's really a very different kind of airplane it's more like the uh, 787 787-10 the Dreamliner with uh, head up display and uh, big um, digital uh, instruments if you compare maybe I should do a flight one day in the uh, 737 I see I think we have if you look at the the, the Airbus here and compare it with the uh, with the 787 uh, sorry not the 787 the 737 you'll quickly notice that the Airbus except for one I'm not sure even if I can make it pop out it's supposed to be here yeah there it is This, as far as I know, as far as I can see, is the only, only manual or analog instrument that you have here in the airplane. Now, where it reads the thing is still the P2 tubes and all that. They are still here. But everything you see, everything you look at in the Airbus, the A321, is digital. Even the little backup compass here digital and I find that to be pretty cool so it's easy to see that the yeah too cunning um, it's easy to see that the Airbus, uh, sorry, the uh, 737, I think it's Dash 300. Um, it's a much older design, much older airplane. And it also has a fire side now, shorter range. One of the things that I don't like about it, and I can show you that at one point, if I fly it, 
is that if you in, in the Airbus, both the Airbus and the 737 has auto land, whatever you want to call it. So you enable the backup um, autopilot, so you have dual um, auto land feature, and uh, and and uh, then you can then the airplane can basically land itself. So both airplanes have that ability. Where the Airbus reads all the information it practically needs from the from the MCDU, the flight management system. The and that's what I found out. The uh, the the seven thirty seven is a little bit more tricky. So you have a course key up here, and you have a course key up here. Now the course key here uh, knob. You have to set that at the course of your ILS. So let me show you here. We have uh, our ILS approach into Vega is 305. So in order to do a single cat or a single uh, autopilot land, I had to set, let's just say this would be the knob because it's roughly where it would be in the 737 i would have to set that to 305 if i wanted to do an auto land with two autopilots i would have to say the code pilot course at uh, 305 as well and then i can enable both autopilots for landing that annoys me <laughs> very much i have to admit um there, this is where the airbus is much more friendly because it's i mean it's just easier Easiest to use. Let me see if I can. Uh, let me see. Toggle mesh console. Let me see if I can write that in here. Dot meter. E K V. No, I can't do that here for some reason. if anything has changed no still 1350 solo so we're still at uh, 1013 all right but i can also check it here if i want to One eighty seven and a nine. Oh, the it seems that the variable now changed it's seven knots now. Overcast at flight level so around two thousand three hundred. That's low. <laughs> um, let's go and put it in. Now let's do it the right way. So uh, let's see, it was uh, performance. That was uh, 187. All right. Everything else checks out fully. All right. <clears throat> I think we are roughly set for our trip to uh, landing at the... Uh, now, since it's a relatively short runway, I'm going to go for a medium auto break. Definitely. <laughs> And one of the things I've learned by watching, um, I think his name was Bjorn, Bjorn, was a pilot who flies the Airbus family bigger 
airliners than the uh, definitely bigger airliners than this uh, the A321. I think it, 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 it has flown 30s, 40s, and 50s. So the the wide body. Um, Sorry about that. I just had to yawn. <laughs> um, the wide body uh, types of aircrafts, airbuses. All right, let's see. Runway, we have set that in. Standard arrival. No temporary. Nav and ADF frequencies. They are active. ILS frequency in course. It's okay. Bearing distance. Yeah, I know. We are in manage. We have said all of this. American Transit on MD8, landing performance calculated via this console auto brake. We don't have a, a, a calculated, so I'm just going to go for medium. Hopefully, that is enough. And uh, we can't fiddle with that. Time enough, we do. Arrival. We run runway, go round. Altitude bug, and yes, that's okay. Oh, that's the descent procedure. Uh, fortunately, I cannot remove it, so let me just get that out of the way. Alright, so our descent. Let's just start here. Let me just remove that hole because I don't think we need it. So I'm going to flight plan. Set a hole. Let's go to that. To be able to just say clear and clear the hold. Yes. So, um, yes, as you can hopefully figure out by now, my summer vacation. I mean, not the vacation in itself, but the trip that I had. Sorry, yawning again. <laughs> the trip that I did with my family. We, we went into a... I'm not sure what you would call it in, 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 in English, British talking countries, but if I had to translate it directly I would call it a summer summer vacation house that's the name of it sounds really weird um, but it's basically a house that you place a, in, it was placed in, in Jutland northerly part of Jutland out to a little fjord um, and uh, we spent a week there with my parents and my wife and our kids we didn't get to go and bathe in the fjord as, as much as we wanted to but it did have a spa and a sauna so we could use that and it was just nice nice quiet vacation although my son was a little bit homesick in the end, he was missing his uh, beloved computer. <laughs> so yeah, that that was the only thing. But but we're I'm back now, and uh, that's why I haven't been putting out videos or anything like that. If you watch my latest video, I explained what was going to happen. So hopefully you did that. But I'm back again. I'll try my best to get a relatively stable. Um, streaming program streaming schedule going but i i may I, like i said a many 
million times now almost my family situation simply does not allow me to just put a schedule and set it so it will always be my ability to stream will unfortunately always be if I can that's the way it is just the way it is I'm sorry to say it but uh, All right, let me, let me, uh, let's run Ray 30. Maybe I should change that because... No, I'm going to get a, a, a side wind in any case. No, I think we're going to change that. I'm going to start my descent now. And uh, I think... With a wind of 180, let me see the other... We have a 12, yeah, let's use that, it's just <laughs> obvious. Please your Please and complete each form and keep them with you for presentation upon arrival. Let's see what our... Uh, well... There are no eyeless the other way around, so it's going to be S's. It's only 30s, the only one who has. It's very slow wind. So I think it's going to be fine. Let's. Put the seatbelt signs on. Let's see if I can see him. Oh yeah, he's out there. He's also going for two DT3s. Let's see what he says. See someone in TL three C Y.
Let me see if I can change that in here. Let's see. It's pilot. Yeah, the dog labor labels. Let me see if I can see him under the radar. Let's see what he's going to say. Let me just tell him. Let's see... Yeah. Seatbelt sign should be on. Wilco, Scandinavian, 7 to 8. Turn on the terrain radar. Still can't see them. Okay. So if you are wondering why the airplane is sometimes jolting around, uh, it's because I've set the uh, weather update to 30 minutes interval. And for some reason, the weather apparently changes so much that, uh, <laughs> that the airplane sort of jolts a little bit around. I mean, obviously it doesn't... Uh, kill the autopilot or anything like that but it <laughs> it is a little bit annoying 
Let's see. Let me see what my what was was my entry. Four thousand. Yeah, the entry is four thousand. So we have a three or five. It should be standard. If it says anywhere, if it's a standard. Glide slow. Oh, the transition altitude is seven five. It's over, all right. Put that in. Stop that. There we go. Climb on localizer to do mute and no, that's the misapproached. Let me get the AV tab out so we can check it out here because I need to know. I wanted to know. It's a little bit more steeper. It's a 3.5 cent ankle. So I think I'm going to uh, going to be stabilized before getting onto the localizer. to minimums that's what we have down here set it to 1250 145 all right now we can even see parts of uh, the Faroe Islands. Let's see if we can see them on the radar yet. And I need to have this placed there. Yeah, that's good. Nope. Still no joy. Are they closer?
So if I go a little bit quiet here, it's because I'm really focusing on uh, flying. <laughs> Set it to 270 to see if we can... Send a little bit faster. Let's just put on the... Lights now. See anything else we need? Let's put on... We don't need engine to NCIs just yet. Tit belts are on. Everything else seems good. What's the temperature? Minus 11. Alright, let's put an engine to NCIs on. Uh, 5. Turn it to condition. All right, so let's set the uh, auto brakes. Engine out. We already did that. Time enough. Yes. Arrival. Yes. Altitude. Yes. Already did that. Oh yeah, I could have done that, obviously. Open descent. See if I can remember how I did this one here. There we go. Half. We have begun our final descent into your destination. Flight attendants will be passing through the cabin to collect any trash one final time. Please ensure tray tables are stowed and seats are in the full upright position. Please also store any carry-on items either in the seat back pocket or under the seat in front of you. All Wi Fi related tasks and show any larger electronics. Look at that. That's the Fair Islands. Alright, let's just turn on the The lights as well. So when we're below cloud cover and hopefully not flying into anything, um, we will... Uh, yeah, that's one other thing that annoys me a little bit. Just a little bit about explain. It's the way the clouds move in front of you. It's just like they sort of slide out to the side. Look at that. Local Q and H, and that was the thirteen, right? Let's check the heavy tam, EKVG update, ten thirteen. Yes.
Now you can say a lot about the Faroe Islands, but beautiful, they really definitely are. It's just how. F All right, let's put it up to. Uh, what's the? I can remember what the minimum for. Two twenty-five. All right, so let's set it to two twenty-five. No, let me see again. Two thirty-eight. Let's check the. One fifty-five. All right. Let's set it to two twelve. Get this airplane slowed down. <laughs> My daughter is being naughty. Look at that. Beautiful. The Faroe Islands, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're below cloud cover. We can turn off engine anti-ice and set it back to non-ignition. to going to managed going to it's already in managed all right it's getting even 728 on final for echo kilo Victor Gulf Runway three zero. All right. Get this up. Landing gear down. All right, now we're just waiting for the eyeless to capture. Let me see where we are according to tablet we should be close enough so it's a one one let's hope that I've put it in let's see Yeah, it is. 103. Oh, wait a second. Put on landing. There we go. 
and come on that should be approach enable approach let's put in the final flaps and now you can see the runway down there we have glide slope perfect Canadian 728, glide slope captured, ready for landing. Alright, let's see. Everything seems to be in order. We have all the lights Traffic. on. Traffic. 2,500. 2,000. Out there. Alright, let's remove this. I don't need this. Oh my. That is why an autopilot is really nice to have. Let me just for safety measures put the engine anti eyes and set it on to ignition. Just in case. Uh, let me see if I can get my feet up a bit up. That is a short runway. <laughs> Now we add approaching decision height, 1, but I can see that we are. Yep. <laughs> when it does that. Hundred above. Autopilot off. Minimum. Everything is set. We are ready for landing. Glide slow. Glide slow. Sync rate. Sync rate. 100. Sync rate. 20. 30. 20. Retard. 10. That was not a very nice landing. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our destination. The local time is 
3.52 p.m. and it's currently about 10 degrees Celsius. You can now use your mobile devices. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the vehicle has turned off. Remember vacated. to caution when opening the overhead bins as items may have shifted during the flight. If this is your final destination, we thank you for flying with us and we hope to see you again soon. Alright. We already did all of that. Alright, let's um, find an open place. That's, uh, that's five. I can just use that. Taxi, engine engine eyes off, and set it to. Let's just get a. Canadian 728, taxiing to gate. Canadian 728, taxiing to gate 3. wrong button I'm pressing. There we go. <laughs> Parking brake. Alright, let's turn off the lights, runway, nav off, wings, beacon off, no, beacon should be on. Drop off. I'm not going to take off right now. Just ding them. There we go. <laughs> we landed. Uh, let me see. hate it when it doesn't release. Alright, let's open some doors. Open C and let's get ground handling. Let's get everything here. Yeah, we need that and we need to drive up. Alright. That's the ground service and I forgot to turn on the APU that when we landed. But we can get should be able to get external power. Yeah I know. Turned it off. Alright, let's uh take a look outside. Let's see how our passengers are doing. Uh, 
they're deboarding. They're very satisfied. That's good. That's the uh Alright, so while they're deboarding, we can take a look around around the airplane. We can turn off the beacon now. Guess we There we go. Let's uh, expedite the uh, by opening the back door as well. It's not really how you expedite the the deporting. It's just me. <laughs> Uh, I forgot some stuff. Let's do that now that we are. We're going to turn off the radar. Going to set this to standby. All right, that should be it. All right, let me. I can turn off the turn on the light in the. Dome light, there we go. Alright, now we can open that door. Let's see if we can ask them to... Do what we can do. No promises. Let's get our deboarding station. Are we almost done deboarding our passengers? About four minutes. We're still deboarding. They're satisfied. That's okay. I can live with satisfied with that landing. I don't know if you got a bleep in the middle that said how much I landed. I think it was a it was a pretty rough landing. But it's a short runway and it slopes. <laughs> Makes it even harder. Maybe it slopes too much. I'm not sure. That's the truck. Fuel truck. We don't need a fuel truck. Not a perfect landing. Uh, I mean, not a perfect parking, but it's okay. Away now.
Whoa. That is an, <laughs> an interesting parking. I wonder if those are... Let's take a look. Let's see. X-Pilot. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see how we finished. Yeah. We are. Alright. Let's get rid of those. <coughs> Lock the doors. Let's see. Brakes are hard. Alright, let's turn on the brake. Master caution. Turn on the terrain radar as well. Turn off the APU. Let's see how they're parked outside. I just wanted to see. See, why are they parked there? I mean, how on earth am I supposed to taxi anywhere? I mean, um, be pushed, pushed back anywhere. With that kind of... <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, let's just shut down the plane completely. Alright, everything is shut down. I'm going to go to the screencast now, because I wanted to show you some things. Alright, first let's go into here. Let's uh, say disconnect. Put that down. Then let's get the... Uh, I cannot see them on that spy either, so they probably... The pull that in so you can see it. Let's go to end flight. So let's see. Scandinavian 728, that's us. A320 Neo from Albo to Vega. Flight time 1 hour and 44 minutes. Planned departure was 1259.56. Actual was 1306.30. Planned arrival was 1529.56. Actual arrival was almost an hour before, so yeah, you know. Passengers 100, they were overall satisfied. The landing rate was rough. Unsafe takeoff, that means that I didn't get the, uh, the seatbelt thing proper. Um, moderately ahead of schedule or hard landing. So let's see what, we, what, what our ratings was. I mean, that's the ratings, notable events. I mean, yeah, it was a very rough landing. 
So uh, I'm totally telling my friends about this airline. Thank you. That was not a safe takeoff. That's it. All right. And that's all our passengers safe. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this flight with uh, Scandinavian 728. I hope you have enjoyed this stream here flying from Olbo to the Fair Islands. I hope I'll see you in the next stream. I will go make some food for my family now. It's my turn to take the chore. And I will hopefully see you in the next stream. I'll see you then. Bye bye.